Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I might add that uh, when this happens, and it does happen quite often, we normally get more stuff done with about half of them here. So uh, I think we're going to be all right. I, I do have a couple of questions in there, uh, and I was, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Jones, that, that, uh, James, that I wasn't here during your opening comments because I would have enjoyed that. We've had some similarities in our background and, and uh, some of the frustrations uh, are similarities too. Let me just mention, just to get one thing behind us here. I want to thank the Corps for their work in getting the WERDA 2018 guidance done as quickly as you have. Uh, the city of Bartlesville, Oklahoma, and this is one that we've had we worked on for a, a long period of time. Uh, Bartlesville is a small city uh, north of, um, of Tulsa. It's uh, one that had really serious problems in uh, water storage. And so what we did was, uh, was, was get together and try to find out a way that we could, uh, could knock down some of the price of this uh, that came through as $100 million uh, over a 10 year period. Now that's something where that that community, there's just no way that they would could be able to come up with that. And so people are forced, communities are forced into situations where they might have to figure, uh, do it themselves and figure out ways to do it, to make it come into compliance and all that. So what happened was in that case, uh, that was right before the, uh, I guess the last uh, word of bill, Water Resources Development Act. And uh, I actually had to put an amendment on there to, to negotiate that down to something that was livable. Now, it, it ended up working. That's a happy ending story. And uh, by the way, none of the stuff I'm going to mention happened during your watch. It was always before, so that's one of the problems you and I talked about even before you or your confirmation. So uh, unfortunately, there's another city, a larger city, Enid, Oklahoma. And it seems like the uh, core price structure is uh, affecting that about the same way as it did Bartlesville, Oklahoma. During talks with the local district, the Corps provided the community with price estimates and the city planned accordingly. And when I say planned accordingly, they actually had to pass a bond issue, and we're talking about around a $4.5 million uh, estimate as to what it was going to cost for this storage to take place. Now, we passed the, bo the bond issue. The, in fact, the bond issue was in 2016. Uh, and after that uh, took place, we found out that we, I would use the word, they were blindsided by the Corps coming in and saying what they failed to do was to get all of the uh, compound interest rates from the time when this first went into effect, which would have been in 19, uh, 1976. That's when a lake called Lake, Call Lake was uh, actually made. Now. We, uh, the Corps has the authority to make changes, and uh, they didn't do it in the case of Bartlesville. So in Bartlesville, I had to actually put an amendment on the word of bill. Now, it looks like if this isn't changed, that we'd have to do the same thing here. And so what I'd, I'd just like to kind of explore what your thoughts are, uh, that uh, as you're faced with these situations, you're getting a whisper from your left, and so you might uh, want to take that in consideration too. Um, how we handle situations like this. Now, if they had known that this thing that started out to be a $4.5 uh, million dollar contract or, uh, or liability, uh, they had to end up adding to that $8.5 million, making the total amount $13 million, $13 million instead of the four point five million that came from a bond issue. Now, that's just on its face something that shouldn't happen. And it happened because they were not aware. There's a lot of noise about whether, when they were preparing the 4.5 bond issue that uh, it was what the cost was going to be. And so that's what happened, and, and that's how we got into that situation. So I have two things that I'm concerned about. I'd like to know in that particular case, is, something, is there something that we can actually do right now? Because I think it's within the purview of and the authority of the core to do something about that. And then secondly, to preclude that from happening again. D does all of that make sense to you in terms of what happened? Uh, yes, sir, if I may let uh, General Spellman address that first and then I'll follow up uh, quickly with my thoughts. Good. Yes, sir. So, uh, to, yes, we are uh, taking action here. We owe the Secretary uh, by August um, 
uh, a revised rulemaking for the uh, water supply rule. The, 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 dynam the dynamic, the situation that you're describing really can be traced back to the, what, 1958 Water Supply Act, where the Secretary of the Army is authorized to provide storage to local communities uh, for, for water supply purposes. Um, with the fact, provided that uh, those entities agree to pay their fair share of the, uh, the cost to, uh, to store that water. And so in some of these uh, cases, uh, you have um, uh, entities that are uh, requesting storage behind a dam that may have extensive operation costs, maintenance costs, repair or rehabilitation costs. And so the entity ends up bearing a percentage of that, uh, of that burden. The, uh, the rule that we are taking to the, uh, the secretary in August, we're trying to bring more consistency and clarity to the public in the way we go about this at over 100 reservoirs across the Corps. Well, yeah, consistently, and what about fairness? Shouldn't that be in there too? I mean, wh what's your reaction? I always, it always bothers me when I hear a response, this is something we this started in 1958, you know, as if, you know, we've been doing it wrong all these years, so let's keep doing it wrong. And that's what I, my fear is and what your recommendation yeah. may be to the, um, to the secretary. Yeah, yes, sir. So uh, at, over those 100 reservoirs that I just described, I would tell you there is very little consistency uh, across the core in this practice. And again, that's the intent uh, of the, the revised rule that we want to take to the secretary. Mr. Secretary, and then also, is, is there anything in, specifically on the Caw Lake uh, problem that uh, should, could be, well, I know it could be, but should be addressed now? Uh, yes, sir, to answer that directly, there should, it should be addressed the, uh, the same way that the, the uh, Bartlesville was addressed, in my opinion. Uh, hopefully, you wouldn't have to uh, add legislation to do that. Mm -hmm. I'll just make this comment. I'm looking forward to get this water supply rule, this new one, on my desk. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to help uh, the core stretch what appropriation we get as far as I can help them stretch that appropriation. Sure. sure. But I'm also, you know, when I came to this town, I was kind of known as the flood control guy. <laughs> and, and I guess I was kind of the flood control guy where I've lived all my life. But I've discovered since then that there are other issues in parts of the country that I was not aware of, water supply being one of those issues. I've tried to learn that issue, uh, tried very hard to learn that issue. And I'm looking forward to get that. So in, in, in the long run, I will try to be helping the, uh, the users as best I can without breaking law. And, and I'll also try to be helping the core I appreciate uh, that. Uh, get, get it right. Uh, I've extended my time here. Uh, I would only say one thing and something that the chairman's fully familiar with. I sometimes comment to people, I had a hard job one time. I was the mayor of a city. I would hate to be the mayor of the city of Enid after they going through all the expense of passing a four and a half million dollar bond issue only to find out it should have been 13 million. That's kind of awkward, isn't it? Yes, sir. Thank you.